Hi. So far we've introduced you to the concept of the Section 7 consultation and shown you how to use the Federal Register. Now let's take a high-level look at the components of a Section 7 consultation and look at some of the foundational documents in addition to the Federal Register that will help you through the consultation process. First and foremost, to have a smooth consultation, action agencies and the services should work closely together while developing the proposed action. This informal communication can help identify all participating agencies, ensure the proposal will achieve the goals and objectives for all agencies and applicants, and make the project successful as well as protective of listed species. Ultimately, to initiate consultation, the action agency produces an initiation package. This initiation package must provide a minimum amount of information to the services, but oftentimes more information is even better. The information in the initiation package is intended to facilitate consultation, so you can understand why more is better. There may be specific requirements for an initiation package, which are identified in the Federal Register at 50 CFR 402.12. However, Regardless of the form the initiation package takes, there are six requirements in order to initiate. These requirements are 1. A description of the proposed action, including the purpose, timing, location, components, and how they will be carried out. 2. Maps are generally helpful to convey much of this information. 3. Information about the listed species and their designated critical habitat such as presence, abundance, density, or occurrence. 4. A description of the effects of the action and cumulative effects. 5. A summary of relevant information provided by the applicant if one exists. And 6. Any other relevant information that can help identify likely effects of the action to listed species or their designated critical habitat. Official listing documents and designations of critical habitat can be found in the Federal Register. These six items required to initiate consultation are explained fully in 50 CFR 402.14 under Section C. Once the services receive the initiation package, there are several possible responses. First, it is possible that if there was insufficient communication prior to requesting initiation of consultation, there may be additional questions or areas that need increased clarity. This could result in a response requesting additional information, which could delay the start of the project. This is why it is so important to collaborate informally while developing the proposed action. Assuming no additional information is needed, then there are two other responses the services can provide. After reviewing the proposed action, the status of the listed species and designated critical habitat, the effects of the proposed action, and the cumulative effects, the services will reach a determination. One determination could be may affect, not likely to adversely affect, which is often referred to as NLAA. The other is may affect, likely to adversely affect, which is often referred to as LAA. A not likely to adversely affect determination will result in a letter of concurrence. A likely to adversely affect determination will result in a biological opinion. The importance of both documents is producing an assessment of the proposed action, identifying the likely stressors the action will produce, and identifying the species and designated critical habitat that are likely to be affected. This will ensure the services understand the consequences of the action and how those consequences are likely to affect individuals, populations, and the species along with their designated critical habitat. Because the purpose of both documents is the same, the letter of concurrence is basically a short biological opinion. Whether a letter of concurrence or a biological opinion, the services must 1. Review and acknowledge the proposed action. 2. Evaluate the current status of the species and their general trends, along with the status of their designated critical habitat. 3. Evaluate the effects of the action, along with cumulative effects, to both the species and their designated critical habitat. And four, consider the effects of the action from item three in light of the status of the species and the designated critical habitat identified in item two. 
For a letter of concurrence, the fourth step will highlight that the consequences of the proposed action are either extremely unlikely or will have such a minimal effect that there is not likely to be an effect to listed species or their critical habitat. This analysis should allow for a clear conclusion statement that is well supported with evidence. If it is likely that a listed species will be affected by the action, this is referred to as take. Take is defined as to harass, harm, pursue, hunt, shoot, wound, trap, capture, kill, collect, or attempt to engage in any such conduct. When this will occur, a biological opinion is the appropriate response. The same analysis will be used but it will be more detailed. This analysis is frequently called the Jeopardy analysis. There is still a review and acknowledgement of the proposed action. The status of the species and their critical habitat is generally discussed in greater detail, and a biological opinion will include an environmental baseline, which is all activities in the action area that have affected the listed species or their designated critical habitat up to the time of consultation such that it is a snapshot in time of the condition of the species and their designated critical habitat at the time of the analysis. We also still analyze the effects of the proposed action and cumulative effects, but this will often be broken into separate concepts of the likelihood of exposure to stressors resulting from the proposed action, the likelihood of responding to those stressors, and an assessment of the risk the combination of exposure and response may pose. When discussing the responses and risks to the species and designated critical habitat, be as detailed as possible. So you don't just identify that take is likely, but specify the form of take such as harassment or injury or killing, and specify the life stage that is being harassed or injured or killed. Remember, there is no take of critical habitat, but instead an assessment of the risk the proposed action poses. These analyses will be conducted thoroughly and separately for both listed species and for designated critical habitat. The services will then state the conclusion of their jeopardy analysis. Most often, the conclusion of a biological opinion will be that the action is not likely to jeopardize listed species or destroy or adversely modify their designated critical habitat. However, sometimes the services will determine that the action is likely to jeopardize listed species or likely to destroy or adversely modify designated critical habitat. If the conclusion of the biological opinion is that the action is likely to jeopardize listed species or destroy or adversely modify their designated critical habitat, then the next section of the biological opinion will identify an alternative action that will avoid this outcome. This alternative action is called a reasonable and prudent alternative. Most often, the conclusion will be that the proposed action is not likely to jeopardize listed species or destroy or adversely modify their designated critical habitat. Therefore, most biological opinions do not contain reasonable and prudent alternatives. In these biological opinions, following the conclusion statement will be an incidental take statement. The incidental take statement identifies the amount or extent of take that is likely to occur as a result of the action. This should be as detailed as possible, identifying life stages affected and the form of take that is anticipated. In some cases, it may not be possible to identify the amount or the extent of take that would result from an action. In those instances, the biological opinion should explain why it is not possible and then identify an appropriate surrogate that can be used to measure the effects of the take. Once the incidental take has been identified, the services may identify reasonable and prudent measures that are solely to minimize the amount of take identified in the incidental take statement. Reasonable and prudent measures are implemented by terms and conditions, which are specific directions about how to achieve the reasonable and prudent measures and minimize the amount of take. The reasonable and prudent measures cannot alter the basic design, location, scope, duration, or timing of the action. This is discussed in 50 CFR 402.14 Section I-2 of the Federal Register. Reasonable and prudent measures and their terms and conditions are non-discretionary. At this point, the biological opinion is basically complete. If appropriate, the services can include a list of discretionary conservation recommendations. These are discussed in 50 CFR 402.14 Section J. At the very end of the biological opinion, 
there is a section that identifies the reasons the biological opinion would be required to be reinitiated. The purpose of this section is to protect listed species and their designated critical habitat in the event there are changes after the completion of the biological opinion. These are explained in more detail in 50 CFR 402.16.